Hi, everybody. This is Angela Cadalesa here with Greg Pearson, a member of our Polymass Place community. And I'm so excited to speak with Greg today. He's so enthusiastic about all things polymathy related. And as you guys know, polymathy means many learnings. It means you continue to learn broadly and not just narrowly across your lifespan. And Greg has come up with this initiative that he's going to be leading called the LearnAbility Lab. And we're going to be talking more about that today in case you'd like to get involved. All right. Right. All right, Greg. So tell us first, like, what is your vision for the LearnAbility Lab? Like, what does it mean? What does it look like? What will it entail? What is it? Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for having me here today. I am really excited. Um, as far as the LearnAbility Lab, the idea came to me in so much as I, I really like the idea of the each individual's per, I'm sorry, each individual's uh, uh, potential as far as what I call expansive human potential. What I mean by that is every single person is capable of growing or learning no matter what. So my idea or my interest lies within how far can you go? What, what's, the, what's the scope of that? Not just within each individual skill, but maybe a variety of skills. Now, some of the ideas that I came up with um, may have already been done, but that's okay. I don't want, I don't want to limit myself in just being necessarily unique I always like to say that I don't need to be unique as long as I'm genuine. So what I, what I mean by that, some of the ideas I came up with are, you know, I've always heard that if someone loses uh, their sense of vision, then their other senses become more uh, acute. So their sense of hearing becomes so much more subtle. So my thought would be what happened, what would happen if just like going to the gym, you put yourself through a regimen of, of working out so that you become stronger or faster, what would happen if I were to put together uh, a regimen of sensory deprivation where maybe I, if I have two days off and I don't have anywhere to go or I plan to have nowhere to go, if I were to blindfold myself for two days. Now, most people would probably think that's a little out there and I have to, have to admit it may be, but on a regular basis, what would happen? Would I become more sensitive in terms of hearing, touch, who knows? And then same thing with hearing. What if I were to, to uh, you know, put uh, a soundproof earmuffs on for hours on end? Would my vision become that much more clear? So those types of things, um, I know there have been studies like this that, that, that have been done, uh, but I, I'm very curious to see what happens with me. And I'm also really interested in what would happen for other people, meaning other people within the community of Polymass Place. I'd really like for them to get involved as well and kind of we can all kind of make it this, like you said, an initiative where we all share our findings. So very scientific and I've never considered myself uh, a scientist at all. I definitely consider myself an artist. And I know that, that you've mentioned before that approaching life from kind of an artistic standpoint, not in so many words, um, I think gives a, a, a broader perspective. So in a very uh, broad sense, I would like for as many people to find their interests and see what they can do to develop that. Hmm. So in your learnability lab, would everybody be doing the same experiment or would you be doing your experiment and other people are doing their like testing, exploring, what would it, would it be the same or would it be varied? Yeah, I don't really think there needs to be, um, you know, a one path type of thing. I would like everybody to talk about what they're going to do. Maybe if one group wants to do this one particular exercise, like, hey, what would happen if you did this? And then everybody does that. But if some if somebody just one person says, hey, I just want to do this on my own, by all means. I mean, it's not meant to be any type of, a, a you know, a, a, a way to have people do things a certain way. It's the exact opposite. I want people to feel free to experiment and find out mm -hmm. what it is that interests them and then grow that. It's like gardening. You know, you, you want to make the flowers bloom. You want to see what kind of, uh, how, how delicious the fruits can be based on the changes that you make, especially changes that are completely outside of anything that may be in a book on how to garden, I guess, to further the metaphor. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's cool. It's like life as experimentation and exploration and artistic, like your life as art. Like how can I add a splash of unexpected or a splash of 
science experiment over here. I love exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, as far as um as far as polymathy goes, just to kind of further further that that point, um, I know you've said this before, uh, as well as I've heard other people in, in some of the discussions that I've seen on uh, the YouTube channel say that they believe polymathy is really just humanity at its fullest, and I 100% believe that. I mean, I could be wrong, but everything that I've seen and experienced points absolutely to that because how can you put a cap on learning? At what point have you ever met anybody that says, that's it, I, I can't retain any more information or I can't learn anything more about this subject. There's always more to be learned. I just, honestly, I feel the biggest thing with polymathy really comes from interest. If you have interest and you have zeal to learn, that's it. I, I know I don't have the highest IQ out of everyone that I've met. There are people I've met that are absolutely, truly, genius level there's no question about it but that doesn't mean that i can't further myself in my own development uh and that's really what the learnability lab is about it's not just hey look what we found it's an opportunity for people to get together and share their experiences to kind of really broaden their own horizons their own perspectives so that they can even though they may already see that life really is limitless it's one thing to see it in theory but it's another thing to practice it and we are our own lab. We have so many opportunities to experience life and to experiment with life and to grow. And to me, man, there is nothing more exciting than that because there's literally nothing stopping you but your own belief or lack of belief. You know what this is reminding me of, Greg? When I was 18 and off at college, my first semester, I took a freshman seminar and the whole seminar revolved around just trying new things. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit different than like the lab experiment concept, but kind of similar, like what happens if you just try something new? And it was so amazing yeah. to just try new things. I, I do. I, I see it as exactly the same thing. I think maybe in, in, a, in a class like that. Uh, it may be a little bit different only because people come to it because they have to take a class. So they may not be as open minded, whereas I feel that the people within this community came here because they are open minded, because they already have um, they've had a taste of it and they want more of it. You know, and they want to be with people not to speak for everybody else. I'm kind of speaking from my own perspective here, but I, I really like being around people who uh, who don't try to put any shackles on themselves or me in terms of discussion. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love when I can have a conversation with somebody within the community, uh, whether or not we agree. There have been some people who disagree with me and wow, like I never really thought of it from that perspective. I don't always agree with what they say, but I, I find it equally exciting uh, just to have that conversation with, with other people who, who want to see what else there is. What else can we possibly do? Where can we possibly take this this thing that we've been gifted with from the from the day that we, we we were born. Yeah, I've got a practical question for you. Like you mentioned, discussion. Like, what's your vision for how to compare? Now, will it be like chat on the Facebook group? Will it be on the the new Mighty Networks platform? Will you guys meet up on Zoom or something? How will you? Whoever wants to get involved, how do they get involved? Well, first of all, I have to say I'm not technologically savvy. I'm more of a people person. I like mm -hmm. connecting with people. So I don't know uh, exactly how that would work, but in a perfect world, in my uh, you know science fiction version of technology, I would love to somehow have as many people on camera as possible um, okay. to, to in, the, in the same way that we, if we could all get together in the same room, in a circle and talk, you know, of course, mm -hmm. one person at a time, that type of thing. But yeah, to really be able to share their experience with each other versus you know it's it's one thing to uh be on the facebook page and and type and then you wait maybe two hours or maybe two days you get a response that's one form of conversation but the idea of it having it live and instantaneous through actually vocalizing i, I think it's it's a very exciting um possibility for the uh for the uh, learnability lab that's what i would really like to see Okay, I'm thinking on the new uh, Mighty Network site, which Kane so beautifully put together. Yes, um, there are opportunities for meetups and in Zoom on the platform. So maybe we'll we'll share more details in writing on the Facebook group. 
and we'll Great. and you can figure out like how frequently you'd like to have a, a meet up there and see how it goes. That, that, that would be great. And as far as the, the format, I know we touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, I, I really want to keep it very fluid. I mean, it's generally, I know what, what, I, what I would like to do with it. I know what the purpose is, but how it manifests, I don't really want to try to nail that down. In fact, if other people have ideas, hey, why don't we do this? Great. Let's try it. If it works, great. If not, we'll try something else or try different things. Maybe it can even be kind of a revolving format. Yeah. Um, in terms of, of experimentation or whatever, whatever you want to call it. So I, I do like the idea of it being very, um, very much a group uh, type of a thing as far as making decisions and so forth. Yeah. One observation I'll make too is, you know, being polymathic, mean, you know, it means basically like you're good at learning, like you love learning. You're not just good at it, but, but there you have a hunger for learning and, I also believe, and I could be wrong, but I also believe if you don't use something, you tend to lose it. So joining the Learnability Lab may be a way to help make yourself sharper, like maintain brain plasticity, um, you know, as well as enrich your human experience of, you know, having, having the full vibrant human experience that you'd like to have. I mean, for me, I can already imagine like, hmm, what would I want to learn? What would I want to try that's new? Hmm. Hmm. I'm already playing around with it. So maybe it, maybe it could just be that yeah. a safe place to just see what you want to explore. That's new. Absolutely. And also uh, regarding what you were just saying, I, I'm learning Italian. I think I mentioned that to you before I use an app on my phone. I do it almost every morning. And what I notice is if I miss a day, especially now that I'm moving up in as far as you know what we're learning, it's no longer just this word means this. And this word means that it's actually phrases and tenses. If I miss a day, I feel it, meaning I go back when I review, I, it's familiar, but I'm forgetting things. But if I stay with it consistently, I find that if I do, if I can do twice a day, doesn't really matter when, 30 minutes minimum, 45 is ideal, then I continue to learn at an even quicker rate. So in a way, that's kind of like my own little pre-lab. So mm -hmm. those types of things, you know, will be the things that people find out about themselves. And I'm sure it's different for everybody, maybe some similarities. Um, but yeah, and then regarding what you're saying about, hmm, what would I want to do? To me, um, you know, I've mentioned this uh, a couple of times on Facebook. I'm a huge fan of the X-Men movies, um, just because I think they're cool anyway. But I, I really do feel, and I think I've read this before as well, that those uh, stories, at least in the comic book, were written as metaphor mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, a lot of the characters, when they're under stress, that's when, that's where as, as teenagers, when they were under stress, their powers start to come out. They didn't know they were a mutant until they hit puberty and they were under these situations where something happened and it just came out. And to be able to just decide, what do I want to do? Not what can I do, but what do I want to do? What's important to me? Because, for example, I am not mathematically inclined. It doesn't come to me naturally. But now I'm almost 50 years old and I have an interest in it because I know it's going to help me in this other area. So now I'm focusing on that and I'm learning because I've decided that I'm going to learn it. I've decided that that's important to me. So in the same way that, you know, some of the some of the superheroes in, in various stories have a, a variety of skills you know there are some that just kind of can do whatever they want to do if they think it i love that i really love that it's so um it's, it's it leaves me with a sense of, of power and a sense of personal security you know once once and be, becoming a part of this community really very very recently um kind of for me was the the match that really struck the, the fire. It's like my whole life I had been building this pile of tinder, you know, and yeah, I know I can do it. Yeah, yeah. But something about being in this group really ignited it for me. And um, everything feels different. Everything feels like no matter what, it's going to be okay because I'll figure it out. It's just, like I said, it's just a kind of a, it's a sense of personal security. It's almost like being a martial artist and you walk down the road, like I'll be okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I had this, this light bulb moment the other day too. And I realized in a way, if you really lean into your polymathy, if you really lean in to your ability to learn 
in a way it almost, I mean, you're still human, but it almost makes you unstoppable at life because whatever goal you have, whatever challenge you have, whatever roadblock you have, you can harness your ability to learn and, and get to your goal or get past the problem through learning. And not everybody's good at learning, but it is a way to, to maximize your human experience and to, to the best of your abilities kind of become unstoppable by harnessing your ability to learn your way through life, through problems, learn your way to your goals, make it happen. I couldn't agree with you more. In fact, I was just watching one of your interviews. I can't remember who it was with, but you said that what you noticed in uh, when you were writing your dissertation and interviewing polymaths, that it was the ones who were like, oh yeah, I don't really like to brag about it. They were successful, but it was different from the ones that said, yes, I am a polymath. Yes, exactly. this is a personal sense of pride. And once I saw that video, because I was kind of in the first group <laughs> where I feel like maybe I'm just making this up, maybe uh, the imposter syndrome, but once you said that, I just decided, I literally, driving home from work, I literally said, I'm a polymath. And <laughs> it's really something. It's almost like, um, I don't know, it's almost like an incantation to myself. Uh, and then what you were saying, you know, oh, we're, we're still human. Yes, but I think what's happening is we're, for me anyway, I'm starting to redefine what it means to be human. You know, I just had no idea. It's like having a cell phone that you have for three years and somebody goes, oh, yeah, you can get on the Internet with it. What? I didn't know I could do that. Oh, yeah, it's really easy. And then the whole world opens up to you. So that's kind of what it's been like for me. Yeah, that's awesome. I really do believe, I mean, based on the people I interviewed in my doctoral research and also just common sense and also just in my experience talking to polymaths in a non-scholarly way, there is something powerful about having an identity with a label. And it's ironic because polymaths are used to not fitting in a box, not yes. needing, not wanting the labels, but having an umbrella label of polymath or, or po saying I'm a polymathic person, if you don't feel comfortable with being a polymath, having mm -hmm. that identity does allow you to sort of step into it in a new way to own it helps you leverage it. And so I do encourage people, um, you know, to do that, to do that, to identify that if they feel like that's how they are, claim it, own it, step into it, and then see what happens. Make that your experiment. What happens when you take ownership of your polymath identity? What changes? That would be a good learnability lab experiment, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. You know, it's funny that you said this because just this morning, um, I was thinking to myself, you know, you talk about people with a singular passion or a singular focus, very specialized, whereas polymaths just really want to be generalist or scan, well, not scanner so much, that's a different thing, um, but, you know, general, and it kind of dawned on me, it's, it's funny, but for me, uh, as a polymath, my singular focus is everything, is anything I want, so you know what I mean? It's almost like I'm, I'm, uh, contradicting myself, but oh, yeah. you know, I, I thought it's like, it's like being at a house and you can either go to each room and see what's in this room and specialize in that room, or you can go to this room or you can go down to the basement or up in the attic, or you can just open the front door and you have the whole world. And yeah. that's what I choose. That's what I choose. That's my singular focus. Yeah. I joke because obviously getting a doctoral degree means that you became highly specialized in something with the dissertation. Mm -hmm. And I joke that I became highly specialized in not being hyper specialized. <laughs> it's, it's ironic. <laughs> yeah, anyway. definitely. And, and I, I can't help but think, and I know you, you've posted about him as well, but Bruce Lee, mm -hmm. his uh, whole concept, it wasn't really a style, his concept of martial arts, uh, Jeet Kune Do, the way of the intercepting fist was absorb what is useful and get rid of the rest. And every single person who trains under that concept looks completely different when they fight. They have a completely different way of approaching combat because they just do what works. They don't try to stay within the script or follow the narrative. There is no narrative. It's there's, just you. There's an interesting, like, wouldn't it be interesting to have a discussion about the parallels, the lessons you can learn from that form of martial arts and life itself? Like those sorts of combinations, I think. That's that what that's Thanks. what polymathy allows for. Like combine things, do analogies, analogical thinking between things that mm -hmm. don't seem to go together. 
I remember being in college and feeling like somebody should write a book about the connection between, because I was taking a physics class. I remember thinking so many of the rules of the physical world that I was learning about through physics. I'm like, and I was majoring in psychology. And I remember thinking it's the same with the human mind. Like the physical world gives us all these uh, rules and trends and observations, which apply to the human mind too. And, and I feel like, God, we could have so much fun in our community having these sorts of conversations, comparing, you know, I, contrasting I would love that. disciplines. No, I would love that. Absolutely. I would love that. And I think that fits so perfectly into learnability, the learnability lab. Yeah. Um, we don't even necessarily have to go off and do an experiment, even if people who want to be involved with it just want to get together and just have a jam session where we just talk about stuff like we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. I think that's fantastic because this definitely fits within that scope of finding all the connecting dots. Like how, how do you put these two things together? And then when you see the overlap, like, oh my gosh. And I think the bottom line, at least for me, is that truth is truth, whether it comes from particle physics or poetry, you know, like how would those two come together? But they do somewhere they do. And it's situational and it's going to be independent and, it's it just depends on your experience and how you perceive things and to to have all those unique experiences and then share them with something so, someone else i think that just changes things exponentially mm -hmm. it widens people's minds yeah creating those linkages it's something that's not done for us in the educational system like in when you were a young child like yeah you may have taken a bunch of different subjects in school but nobody was drawing nobody was saying okay let's build a violin you know in in, in some sort of class where you would build a violin and then let's study like the mathematics of the violin sounds and or you know like nobody was creating those linkages and then when you get up to college it's even more siloed and so i feel like we have to make those linkages we have to have those stimulating conversations we have to build the bridges between like, okay, martial arts and human psychology or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so fun to do that. But my point is that is not like there, there is no place in our society for the most part where we're creating a place for those linkages to happen. And maybe that's partly what the learnability lab could be. Like you said, is let's talk about two unrelated things and see how they connect and have fun with Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Yeah. That, that's amazing. And, and I mean, in as much, you know, people oftentimes, as far as their work, they work so they can pay their rent or they can pay their mortgage. They work so, we, you know, we have to buy groceries. We have to get gas. The kids need clothes for school. To be able to get to a point where you no longer have to worry about those things. And that's possible. And there are people who put their sights on that. I want to get to a point where I have $10,000 in the bank or $20,000 in the bank at all times. I have passive income. If that's their choice to pursue that, what comes after that? Then you're really wide open. And I think that's, that's similar to other things. If you can get past just the basic requirement for survival, I think that's what happens you know, throughout history. What has happened throughout history is that we're taught that survival is important and you have to take care of your family. And you do. And survival is important, but that's just the basis. That's just getting started. That's just putting your shoes on in the morning. But after that, I mean, I'm going to be dead in maybe 30 years, 40 years, if I'm, if I'm lucky to live that much longer, you know, so I paid the rent, I have my shoes on. Let's, let's, what else is there, you know? Time for some Isn't fun. <laughs> yeah, some fun, some exploration, some excitement. Yeah, absolutely. Well, for me, Polly Mathy, and I think for you too, Greg, it's a way of living life fully. It's a way of making the most of your human experience. It's a way of reaching for self-actualization. How can you reach your fullest potential if you don't explore and experiment with the fullness of who you are? And that's what I love about the Learnability Lab. It's making a, a place and a time to experiment and explore. Instead of just talking about polymathy, you can do polymathy. Yes, yes. Starting with theory, but not ending there, going into application. I've talked about that already in my some of the, the posts that I put out there. You got to do it. You can't just yeah. talk about it. You have to do it because you're doing life anyway. So why not do it with your hands on the steering wheel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love it. Yeah. All right, Greg. Well, any other final thoughts or comments on the Learnability Lab for anyone who's watching and wants to get involved or is thinking about getting involved? Um, if you're interested, please contact me. Um, I would love to have conversations with you. Uh, I want to 
I want to share my experiences. I want to learn from each and every person, anybody who's interested, any ideas. Um, I, I don't, not really going to necessarily think of myself as a, a leader so much as maybe just a, the first person to come up with the idea and bring it to Dr. Cotalesa. So uh, I just want as many people involved as possible. I want people who are open-minded and are there to learn and grow and share um, as a community. Awesome. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Greg, for taking the initiative to get this going. And I'm thank excited you. to see how it will, how it will take shape. It looks, sounds Me really too. fun. <laughs> Me too. All right. Sounds All right. Good.